Hello coders, I'm Victoria and today I've got a super exciting tutorial to share with you. We are going to create a Next.js app that uses the OpenAI endpoint so that we can chat with ChatGPT. In this tutorial, we're going to create a basic wrapper that you can use to customize and adapt to your own projects. This tutorial will give you the fundamentals and then from there you can adapt it as much as you want and the possibilities are endless. You'll be able to integrate ChatGPT into your site or integrate natural language processing in general. So we've got a lot to cover, let's get started. Let me share with you my vision for this very basic wrapper that we're going to create. So we're gonna create a very simple front end that will have a chat dialog very similar to OpenAI's default chat dialogue, but with a lot less features. And then this front end is going to make requests to our backend, which will make requests to the OpenAI API and then return the response to the front end. Our backend is essentially acting as the wrapper. It is taking the raw response from our front end, augmenting it with different information, and then sending it to ChatGPT, which will then return a response. And so we basically wrap the OpenAI API with all this logic that we use to either change the request or the response. In this example, I'm just gonna show you how we will use it to change the request. But then once you understand the fundamentals, you can go ahead and adapt this however you like, and you can make it a lot more detailed um, and a lot more intricate than the example I'm gonna show you. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create a Next.js app. So let me quickly create a new directory for that. I'm just gonna call this ChatGPT bot, and then I'm going to create a Next.js app. I'm just gonna use Next.js' CLI tool. It makes it so easy, creates lots of boilerplate code so that we don't have to write it all. So I'll run npx, create next app, and then there are a ton of settings that I can um, choose from when creating the app. I'm just gonna say no to everything to, to make this tutorial simple, but I will say yes to um, Tailwind CSS because I absolutely love it and it makes styling so much easier. So, all right, great, let's run that. And then now I can see that the um, command has created a directory um, with all my code and all the boilerplate I need to get started. I can already start running the app. So let me quickly show you this. npm run dev, and then I'll get a local host link and open that in my browser. And then I can see this boilerplate Next.js app. So that's awesome. Like we already got a Next.js app started in just a minute or so. All right, so the next step is I need to install some dependencies that I'll need for this project. To begin with, I, the only ones I think I need are npm install, open AI, so that's what I need to interact with the open AI API, and then I will install .env so that I can store my open AI API key securely. So I'll create a .env file, and then I will create an open AI key there. You can get an open AI key by going to the open AI's website, creating an account, clicking on your settings, and then going to create API key, and then I just created a test key that I will paste here, but you can go ahead and create your own key. And don't worry, I have changed the value of my key so that you can't use this one, sorry. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to do is create our backend. This is essentially our handler that will be that wrapper logic that I was talking about. It is going to receive requests from our front end, make requests to open API, and then return the response. So I'm going to import the configuration and open AI API, and then I'm going to declare an instance of the configuration um, and, and include my API key. Just make sure the name is correct. And then I'm going to create an instance of the open AI API. That is everything I need to declare open AI. Now I'm going to create the base of my handler. For my handler, it's gonna be super simple and I'm just going to use post requests because I am posting a prompt from the front end, calling open API, and then returning the response. So no get requests are needed, just one API call. So I'll reject everything that isn't a post request. Now I will receive the prompt from the request body. I'm just gonna console log it so that I can double check that I received it correctly. And then finally, let's start actually making the request to OpenAI. 
For this, I am going to look at OpenAI's documentation. It's pretty comprehensive, which is great. And for this, I'm going to use the chat completions API. Over here in the documentation, I can see the params that it takes in. It takes in a model, and in this example, it shows it's GPT 3.5, and then it takes in a messages array um, with a series of roles and content. I'm gonna just copy that and then paste it in my handler. And I'll make sure I'm gonna call the right endpoint, create chat completion. Okay, wonderful. I'm gonna get the GPT response from that, log it as well, just make sure I have it, and then return it in my response. The GPT response is not a simple string. It does have a, a couple fields. So we're gonna to have to pull out the actual string text because I don't want to return the whole object to the, my front end. As you'll notice, I do use GitHub's autopilot, so it makes lots of suggestions for me. And sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, but at least it does, for the most part, save me time. GitHub autopilot did suggest a response, but just to double check, I'm going to actually look at OpenAI's documentation and look at the response object. So this is how the response object is structured. Within it, there is a field called choices um, with a message in it with content and role. So GitHub Autopilot almost got it correct, but instead of text, we are sending message content. So I'll quickly update that and make sure we're actually returning the correct string response. Okay, and then finally, we'll catch the error and return a very basic error message. Okay, that's it. We now have a very basic handler that takes in a prompt and then calls the OpenAI API. Now let's add a little bit of customization. So going back to the wrapper that I was talking about, if I wanted my site to function more like OpenAI's generic site, then I would just pass in the prompt by itself. But I want this to be a wrapper. So in this, I'm going to slightly augment the request that I sent to ChatGPT. And in this example, I'm just going to make it very, very simple. I am going to pass in a role that gives a pre-written prompt that will slightly augment the prompt body because it will come right before it. And here, I, I think the best way to understand this is just through an example. So the prompt I'm gonna give it is just give ChatGPT a little bit more instruction. So I want ChatGPT to be my French tutor. I am learning French and I actually do use ChatGPT to learn. Um, so I'm gonna create a bot specifically for that. And so here I will write a long prompt. Um, and for now, this is just hard coded because it's just a simple example. But in your example, you can make this a lot more sophisticated. Here's what I'll say. You are an adaptive French teacher. Based on the user's questions, responses, and the level of French comprehension, adjust your instruction accordingly. Start with a basic level and increase complexity if the user seems capable. Give grammar tips, highlight important vocab, and educate the user on how to become better at French. And then the next message I'll pass in is the prompt from the user. You will notice I use different roles for both of them because my hard-coded prompt is just setting the scene rather than the user's prompt, which is the actual conversation that is going to happen. And so the request that ChatGPT receives is the actual prompt that the user sends, plus this setting the scene that I have passed in before. So of course the response is going to be different than if just the user's prompt was passed in. Okay, now it's time to build our front end page. I am just going to create a very simple page and call it chat.js. And then it's going to look like a very simple dialogue that I will, the user will use to have a conversation with ChatGPT. The most important part of this tutorial is really the interaction with ChatGPT. So I will increase the speed over some of these parts, but I'll include my code below if you want to see it in detail. Speaking of the most important parts, we are going to start by building a send chat function. This is the function that is going, we're going to use to interact with our API that we just wrote. So I'm going to write it right now. I'll write send chat and it's going to take in a message and then call our chat API, receive the data 
and then return the response. You'll see that GitHub Autopilot has completed some of it for me. And then I'll also add a log um, so that it will help me with debugging later down the line. All right, now let's start to build our actual chat component. I'm going to want to keep track of all the messages uh, or the history of messages between my conversation with ChatGPT, and then I want to keep track of my current message. So I'll create state variables for that, and then also create a loading state. Um, and then the final bit is I'll use um, Next.js's use mutation to actually make calls to my API. So I'll declare use mutation here and pass in send chat. So that send chat is the function that is called when I create a mutation. An important function that we're going to create is handle submit. So this is what actually gets called when the user clicks a button to say that they're finished writing their message and they want that sent to our wrapper and then the response will be returned after that. So within the set handle submit, you'll see that again, um, Copilot wrote most of it for me, but I basically create a mutation and then save the message, the message that I just sent in my list of messages. All right, perfect. Now let's start to actually build the UI components. I am really going to rely on GitHub Autopilot for this. I have no idea what this UI is going to look like. Let's hope it looks good, but it just is a huge time saver. So I'll just keep filling in the autocomplete. I really do love GitHub Copilot because it does save me a lot of time, especially when building UI that I don't, I'm not following a spec for. I can always try and improve it later, but it gives me a baseline to work with, which is amazing. All right. So now that Copilot has finished writing most of our components, I have no idea what it looks like, so we'll find out together. Let me just double check that there are no warnings. Okay, I see that use mutation has not been imported, so let me make sure that, or Axios has not been imported either. So let me make sure that both of those are imported. Um, I'll have to npm install Axios and npm install uh, React Query so that I can import Axios and use mutation. Now let's run the site and see what it actually looks like. Okay, so I'll run npm run dev and then navigate back to my site, my local host. And then I'll navigate to the chat page because I did not put it on the index page and then reload. Okay, I'm seeing that I have an error. The page did not load because there's no query client set for use mutation. Oh, okay, this is something that I forgot to do, but I can fix this by going to my app.js file, um, the next.js app.js file, and making sure that I import the query client and query client provider from React Query, and then I will declare an instance of the client and then wrap my component by the query client provider passing in my query client. All right, so I'll save that and refresh and let's see what this looks like. Amazing, okay, here's my site. I honestly did not expect it to look quite like that, but let's just check if it works. We can change the style later. I am gonna start by putting in the text hello and clicking send. Okay. Interesting. I can see in the console log that my send chat response receives something and it actually looks like a correct response. There's a message, this is success, and then data, bonjour, come on, and then the rest of the response. So that's great. It looks like the back end or the call to ChatGPT did, or OpenAI actually did um, succeed, but the, the response is not showing up in the UI, so I must have a bug somewhere in the UI. Time to debug. The first thing I always do when I'm debugging is add a ton of console logs so that I can figure out where the error is happening. And I will log, make sure to log the response and run it again. Okay, interesting. I see that the response from ChatGPT was present, but the response somewhere um, that I just logged in my code is undefined, so I'm not passing it in. And, ah, okay, I see what the problem is. Earlier on in my send chat function, I was returning data.response, but in chat GPT's message, um, I can see that there's no response field. That field is actually called data. So let me go and quickly fix that. And I will 
I'll, I'll fix this code later, the one I share on GitHub, but I'll just respond return data dot data. So I'm actually returning the right thing. Okay, let's run this again. So I'll put in hello and receive ChatGPT's response. Perfect. Okay, now I actually can see the response in the UI. And let me send another message. And you'll see that I received another response from OpenAI that is pasted right below. I can also see that our UI is storing this list of messages correctly, which is great. Wonderful. Now we have built a basic Next.js site that can interact with the OpenAI API. I really want to improve the look of this site though. I don't quite love it right now. And so let me quickly show you a hack that I use to improve my UI. I really know that this chat component is functional. I just don't like the way it looks. And I find that actually feeding something into chat, this into chat GPT really helps improve styling quite quickly. Let me just copy the entire page and then write a prompt in ChatGPT that will help me improve the styling of it. So I'll use ChatGPT4 and I will prompt it. Um, I would like to update my UI so it looks more like chat.openai.com. I want the colors to change between ChatGPT and my responses. I would also like the input, input box um, at the bottom of the page and the previous messages to come above it and be infinitely scrollable. Please, can you rewrite the code for me applying all of these changes? Also, this ChatGPT bot wrapper is a French teacher, so please, can you update the text in the app to make this clear? Use French colors for the app's color scheme. All right, and then I'll paste the code and click send. Let's see what it comes up with. Oh, interesting. Okay, no, I, I see that it's trying to import a CSS file. I did not prompt it fully correctly. Let me make sure it uses Tailwind CSS. So I'll quickly update my prompt and tell it I'm using T Tailwind CSS and I would like all styling to be put in Tailwind. All right, then I'll click save again and let ChatGPT do its magic. Here we go. I can see that it's rewritten my code, taking my um, styling requests into account. I've no idea what this will look like yet. So let's copy it and paste it back in my chat.js file. Let's save and reload. And here we go. Here is what the page now looks like. Bienvenue à ChatGPT, chat with your French teacher. And then it uses different colors for my, um, for my messages and for ChatGPT's response. It also uses a French color scheme, fantastic. And the box is at the bottom with a send button next to it. Okay, this is already looking a lot better. Amazing. My wrapper was just an example. I'm sure you all don't want to create French wrappers. So I did update my code and I've shared it in a link in GitHub right below. And I've decided to make the UI look a bit more neutral. So this is what it actually looks like in the GitHub code. One thing I would like to point out is that I tried to keep my API really simple. And in this version that we just coded together, I am not passing in the whole history of messages that uh, ha has happened between the user typing in the UI and OpenAI's responses. Um, and so if I want to actually pass all that context in or all those old messages in, I will have to change my UI and my API slightly so that I'm actually giving ChatGPT all the context. So I will update my GitHub code that I will share below with that um, new behavior. But for the sake of simplicity in this tutorial, I, the most important thing is I just wanted to show you how to interact with OpenAI's API and interact with that via a UI. That's it for today, everyone. We have built a simple yet powerful conversational bot using Next.js and OpenAI. I've also showed you how to use the OpenAI API and interact with GPT 3.5. We did use the help of Copilot and ChatGPT to help us actually write the code, but in the end, our site is functional and it looks great. And I hope that you guys will adapt it and make something very cool of it. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more tech content.